not long ago, I brought a video to you introducing the Vire stove, a collapsible rocket stove. And in that video, I said I wanted to wait for cold weather to see how it would perform then before I brought back a full review. Well, the people at Vire Stove saw my video and they thought they'd like to reach out to me and offer me another one to test. So I have that in my possession now, so I'm going to be introducing that today, and that is the Vire Mini. If you're interested in hearing more about the Vire Mini and seeing it how it performs, keep watching. So once again, this is the Vire Mini stove, a collapsible rocket stove from the Vire Stove people. And this was sent to me for testing and review. I did not pay for this one. Just to point out, I did pay for the original Vire Stove. And what I want to do is link that video at the end of this one, as well as put a, a card up in the corner of your screen so you can go back and watch that video. It also was a preview video, as I mentioned a minute ago. I'm still waiting for cold weather to see how well these will perform. It's hovering right around the freezing mark here today, so that's a bit of a test, but I wanted to get colder than this before I do a, a full review on these stoves. So I will give you the dimensions of these stoves. I'm not going to show the assembly of it because it's virtually identical to the full-size Vire stove. In fact, the only difference between this stove and the full-size Vire stove are the length of the feed tube and the height of the chimney. That's it. Everything else is of identical uh, shape, size, components are just a little shorter. That's all. So if you didn't watch that other video, I'd recommend you do so so that you can get more information than, than I'm going to provide in this video. But let me give you some basic uh, specifications. So I have them written down. So this stove does come in at 2 pounds or 950 grams, and I know that seems a little bit heavy, uh, but it's a full pound lighter than the full-size stove, so that's quite a bit of a savings. It stands 9 inches tall or 22.5 centimeters in the chimney. It is 7 and 5 eighths inches wide or 19.5 centimeters. It has a burn chamber depth of 3 inches. 3 inches, is that right? No, it's more than three inches. Okay, I've got that one wrong. Oh, there, that's right. Seven and a half inches by 19 cent or 19 centimeters. So it's seven and a half inches down to the fire grate inside of the stove. The opening across the top is three inches. So the chimney and the feed port are three inch square. And that's where the three inches came from. And of course, I'm going to provide all that information in the video description below for your reference. So, I'll give you a couple close-ups. We'll get it down into the fire pit. We'll get a fire going on it because it's mid-afternoon here and I still haven't had my lunch. All right, so you can see the construction is virtually identical. It has the damper on the feed port. If I can lift that up. It has the airflow down underneath the feed ramp itself. Fire grate and everything on the inside is exactly the same. It has the folding legs which come out to give it the stability. Okay, let's set this up in the fire pit. All right, once again, as I quite often do, I have this stove set up in a fire pit for a little bit of wind protection. It looks like the wind has died down here, but uh, just the same. It's a nice, stable place for me to put the stove. So starting a rocket stove, there's no one way of doing it. When you feed it after it gets going, it's intended to be fed down through the feed port because the only portions of wood that are actually or should be actually engaged with fire are the ones that are sitting right over the fire grate, which is the last little portion that is inside of the chimney. So that air moving down underneath the feed ramp will catch the or will feed the fire from below. But quite often when I get one going, I like to start with uh, feeding a little bit down through the top. That just seems to accelerate the startup process and, uh, and gets a bit of a better coals. And then I can start feeding my regular fuel down through the regular feed ramp. So what I'm going to do is I have a little bit of birch bark already inside there and some twigs that I'm hoping are dry. They snapped pretty good, but I'm still a little bit suspect. And once they get caught, I will put the crossbars on top and we'll start the feeding in through the feed ramp. A little bit more birch bark to use as a means of lighting it. Now, if my, this, I've had fires with this at home. This is the first fire I've had with it in the woods. But if it, uh, my experience at home is anything, or my experience here is anything like it is at home, or like it was with the other fire stove, 
it's going to catch on very quickly <laughs> and I think it is I can hear the roaring noise already I was and I don't mind sharing that I was a little wondering when I looked at the stove if the chimney was going to be tall enough if the feed ramp was going to be long enough in order for it to really function as a rocket stove getting good airflow underneath the wood getting good draw up of the chimney I think I'll just drop one or two of the larger pieces down inside mostly because I just I have them might as well get them going uh, but so far uh, my my concerns are unfounded it does seem to catch on well and it does seem once it gets going it's a little slow today but that's uh, to be expected I think once it gets going it uh, really starts to draw air and you'll see a good good amount of flame and heat rising over the top of the chimney I think it's starting to catch on now yeah here we go still a little smoky so I think I mentioned earlier that this is a pre preview not a full review of the stove and the reason being is I, my experience with a lot of rocket stoves is that uh, because the collapsible packable ones aren't insulated on the sides that they tend to lose heat out of their chimney during the winter so I've had some poor experiences with a few other stoves so I'm looking forward to testing this in the winter to see how well it's going to work so it's starting to really take off now as you can see I think I'll put another smaller one inside here and I have some larger splits of maple that are a little questionable but I'll start feeding those in a minute That'll lean in. Oh, actually, I think I'll take my microphone off my jacket and let you hear this. Oh, that's picking up anyway. It's uh, drawing with a great deal of force, which is exactly what you hope for in a rocket stove. my gloves on so I can put the crossbars on and it's not that the crossbars are necessary for the function of this stove because they don't they're, they're, they're at the same height as the rest of the chimney just that they provide a little wider support for a larger pot and I will be using a larger pot on this in a few minutes time to keep my lunch up in Yeah, that, uh, that's working well. Nothing to complain about here. All right. Let's put my bush pot on and see how it does. Get rid of the leaves off the bottom, pine needles. Obviously, I didn't get rid of all the pine needles and leaves. So there's what I wanted to see with this is what kind of a dampening effect the uh, a pot would have on top of it because it does of course restrict airflow at the top of the stove and it is it is dampening it down more than it did I think now again this since this is a preview and not a full test more than it did with the full size virus stove so I am getting more smoke than I did before but uh, we'll let it go for a second maybe the fire just needs to engage a little bit more but it does seem to be smokier than the full-size fire stove was at this point anyway. What's it look like underneath? Whoa, yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots of flame, lots of heat coming up. But you may be able to see there is a little bit of smoke coming back out through the ramp. It's not that I'm concerned about it, but I think that uh, may be an indication Okay, suddenly it's changing. I was a bit concerned that it wasn't drawing down the feed ramp, underneath the feed ramp, as it should be. But uh, for whatever reason, it's changing right now, even as we speak. It's smoking less and drawing better. Okay, so for a first look at this stove, I think you've got the impression of how this is functioning, how it operates. Uh, I'll give you a few more comments, but once again, since this is a preview and not a full review, we'll do that at a later time. So let's wrap this video up.
So once again, this has just been a preview of the Vire Mini from Vire Stove. Do you know, it's hovering right around freezing today, and uh, I wasn't expecting the best performance from the Vire Stove, because my experience has been rocker stoves don't work that well in cold weather. Not that freezing is cold. It'll get a lot colder than that, of course, over the winter. But uh, I was pleasantly surprised, in fact, very much impressed with how well this stove uh, worked especially once it got going it did seem to take a little longer to get going than the full-size fire stove goes but once it did start drawing it worked perfectly so after I turned the video off of its operation I was able to cook a full lunch and make a pot of coffee as well all with the same load of wood so yeah I thought this worked very well for its first time out in the woods but there's more testing to be done before I bring it back a final word on this so if you have any comments on the fire mini I'll I'll put the information that I have so far in the show notes or video description below, you know, the size, the weights and that type of thing, as well as where you can get it. And if you have any questions, please put them in the uh, question section below as well, the comment section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.